We are about to see the launch of the William Kate Johnson and with us is... Uh, Connor Ray, Director of the William Kate Johnston Preservation Society. Now this is a long term project isn't it and this is the first time it's been in water for how long? So uh, it'll be the first time that she's been on the River Mersey in uh, almost 20 years. Uh, the last time she was here was for a uh, parade uh, for the RNLIs, I believe for the 175th anniversary which would have been 1999 in fact, uh, so that was 25 years ago. Of course it's the 200th year of the RNLI this year and it also marks 100 years uh, since the William and Kate Johnston was put into service at New Brighton RNLI as well, so quite a poignant moment all round. Now it's a very special boat as well, it's like, it saved how many lives? So uh, she launched 96 times over the course of her service and saved 248 lives in total, which is remarkable really, it's quite a lot of lives saved. How big is it? It's a 60 foot Barnet class lifeboat. And how heavy, because I notice there's a massive crane on it. Yes, uh, it's a good question. I'm pretty sure she's around 44 gross tonnage um, at the moment, yeah, hence the need to, to get some specialist equipment to lift her in. Now, it's had quite a lot of modifications over the years. Are you going to be putting it back as it was originally? Uh, that's the plan, as close as we can get. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a, um, a combination based on kind of what we feel best practice will be. Um, as we want it to be, eventually we'd like it to serve as a museum piece so that people can learn about her, both her magnificent history and she can um, be a part of the magnificent maritime history of the Mersey, um, but also as a working vessel on the river for community trips, uh, for day trips, things like that. So it'll be a bit of a... Um, bit of a job to kind of figure out what's best place to restore it as best we can to the original but also to uh, to make sure that we can accommodate guests as well and, and having people on board. This originally had a mast, has it still got it? It has still got the mast, yeah. Uh, we've had to drop it whilst she gets craned in and out of the water and all the rest of it and uh, couldn't be travelling up. Uh, she came up by road um, because of the, initially she was in no fit state to come under her own steam, unfortunately. Uh, but we've hopefully seen to that uh, so she can now make the journey today and uh, yeah, and then eventually we'll get the mast back up when the restoration works complete. How many more of these boats are there in existence? So this is one of four Barnet class lifeboats that were made. Uh, at the time that it was put into service, it was the biggest lifeboat in the world. Um, the, I believe that all four of them are still in existence. Um, this one is kind of this was the most was the most at risk before the WK JPS stepped in to, to save her. Um, that's 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 ourselves. Uh, the other three, uh, I think one's down in Spain, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure where the other two are at the moment. And this has, uh, over the years, had a, quite a bit of damage, hasn't it? It has, yes. Um, so, uh, particularly uh, from some of the rescues, uh, there were some really quite noticeable rescues that she, she undertook. Um, one on the Pegu, um, where she saved over 100 lives, uh, and another on the Emile Delmas, uh, which was a French vessel, uh, where she took quite a lot of damage. Uh, and unfortunately, the ship's engineer lost his life on that, that rescue as well. Um, and that's kind of, that's, it's that sort of history, which is why we're so keen to, to preserve it, restore it, and make sure that people can learn about it as well. We think it's a really poignant piece for, for maritime history on the Mersey. What's going to be your biggest challenge? The biggest challenge at the moment is uh, is fundraising. Uh, we've had an incredible swell of support initially uh, from our from our backers. So we've had uh, we had a crowdfunding effort for phase one, raised just over ten thousand pounds to see her craned out of the water down on the south coast and brought back by road uh, up to Merseyside where where, where she belongs. Uh, and then from there we've we've had some incredible favours done for us. Camelard have, have uh, very kindly donated the paint, uh, which you can see she had a fresh coat of paint for her, for her press duties today, which is nice. Um, MST have been incredible uh, this week where she is right now um, for allowing her to, to be here whilst we carried out the initial works uh, and the same over at Sand and Half Tide as well that they're being incredibly accommodating um, so the biggest challenge after this will be uh, finding new larger pots of funding so that we can undertake uh, the kind of main restoration work all in one go. How easy would it be to get parts for it? Uh, it depends which parts. It's the, there's a lot of the um, original woodwork when we stripped the back. Uh, it, incredible, incredible craftsmanship. A real testament to the, the ship builders down in Cowes that, that built her. Um, it, it, unbelievable craftsmanship, especially when you consider they were working with hand tools and, and, and you know very, very uh, no no power tools, so to speak, uh, and certainly no modern methods that we have. Uh, the trickiest bit is the knowledge now. Uh, it's finding somebody who has that specialised knowledge that can come in and, and, and lend a hand and, and tell us where we need to where we need to restore and, and, and fix. And, and then it'll be the trickiness of uh, sourcing parts where we need to. There'll be some mod cons as we need. Of course, we'll need some modern navigation equipment and things like that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be figuring that out as we go. Have you actually taken it on the water before? 
Yeah, she's made one journey uh, so far in the water whilst we've been uh, whilst, whilst she's been under our, our ownership, uh, and that was across uh, across the waters down at Portsmouth, so that she could be uh, she could be craned out of the water there. It's a very short journey, uh, but she did manage to do it under her own steam. Uh, but today's uh, the next challenge. Uh, we we think she's ready. Um, we're pretty sure she will be, and it's a much longer journey today. And you're being joined by. Uh, today we'll be escorted up the river by uh, New Brighton RNLI's uh, B Class Atlantic 85 lifeboat, um, crewed by their volunteer crew. Um, we're incredibly grateful. Obviously, the links with New Brighton RNLI are incredibly strong. This is that's where she served between 1924 and 1950. I think um, they are, you know, two of us are current crew on the on the lifeboat at New Brighton, and uh, one of us is ex crew as well. Um, so we're incredibly proud that we can tie this together and, and have the current lifeboat out as well. How important do you think it is to actually get something like this back on the water? For us, it's the that's the reason that we undertook the uh, undertook the task, and, and quite a task it's proven to, to be. Um, she was in danger of being destroyed down on the south coast, um, and, and we sort of, when we found that out, we, we couldn't let that happen. And um, we think she's too important to the maritime history of, of Merseyside, uh, and, and we're really keen that you know as a a poignant vessel that saved lives. We still um, we still get messages of, of from people whose family served on the ship, or no no people that did, or friends of family that were rescued by her and such like. Um, so it, it's an, an incredible, um, incredibly important piece of history to preserve, or we feel so anyway. People don't realise how important as well the area is for lifeboats being the first place to ever have a proper lifeboat service. Yes, yeah, that's right, yeah, quite, quite, quite right. Are you going to do anything with this to actually promote it? Uh, yeah, I mean, there'll be plenty of opportunities in the future. Uh, we're hoping that we can um, that we can tie in with with New Brighton R and I and and Hoy Lake and West Kirby as well, as well as kind of uh, the other the other stations in the northwest. Um, the future is 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 bright, but it's also um, it's also completely open at this point at this point in time. Um, we know that the R and I are, are intrigued by our progress, um, and they they they've given us their support, which is lovely. Um, and I think as we move through the restoration process properly, we'll figure out exactly where she'll sit and exactly what, how we can use her to, uh, to complement both the, the history, the present and the future of the RNLI and, and also of her magnificent place in the river. Do you think there's going to be any films set on it? <laughs> uh, that'd be nice, yeah, it'd be lovely. Only if I get to play the lead though. That's the <laughs> yes. Thanks, and if anybody wants to find out more, where can they go? Uh, so, best place to find out more and to uh, follow our progress will be our social media pages. We can be found at, uh, at WKJPS or at the William and Kate Johnston Preservation Society. Thanks, and good luck, and uh, good luck with the launch. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks for coming down.